What's up, Home Slices? It's Kiera with Home Slice Adulting, and I'm coming to you back again for the review for Love and Hip Hop Hollywood Season 4, Episode 7. And so they had back to back episodes on Sunday and Monday, and so now I'm back to let you guys hear what I have to say about this second episode. And so I will say that the last episode was, you know, um, one of those throwaway episodes that I kind of could have done without. But this episode was really interesting, and I don't have a lot of time, so I'm going to try to run through this as quickly as possible. So let's talk about Ray J. Um, Ray J was very funny, and he said, you know, I'm back in the studio trying to get these hits cranked out because my last hit was Sexy Can I, and that made me laugh so hard because he was right. Um, and so we see Bridget Kelly and y'all, I don't know much of anything of what Bridget Kelly has done. And I had to look her up on Wikipedia and I didn't know any of the songs that she had sang, but the only thing that was memorable about her was she was the artist that was supposed to sing Frank Ocean's Thinking About You. And he like sold the song to her, but then he leaked his version of it and it eventually showed up on his album. So that's the only thing that I remember about her. But she can sing and her voice has like a raspiness to it. So um, Ray J has been sleeping in the studio, um, using the studio as an excuse <laughs> so that he can get his sperm count up. And so, um, so Bridget Kelly is telling him, oh, you know, I want to get away from the R&B ballad thing and, you know, expand my repertoire of the type of music that I can do. And so Ray J's like, well, let me hear something. And then she sings a song that's an R&B ballad. And Ray J had a point about that. Like, there's a whole bunch of people, like, if you watch, like, audition shows, like X Factor or America's Got Talent or whatever, you'll see people be like, well, I want to get away from this. And then they end up falling right into that, um, you know, stereotype of what they didn't want to be. So he had a point. And so Ray J is trying to change Bridget Kelly's image. And I looked her up and she's like 31 years old. So I don't think the image he has for her is age appropriate, but whatever. Um, and I'm trying to figure out is is Ray J a producer, a manager? I don't, I didn't understand his capacity, but Bridget is clearly not feeling it, but I think she's out of options. So <laughs> anyways, um, he plays the song for A1. We see him in a different instance. He plays the song for A1 talking about the P is good and not the, not the peen, but the other P is good. And he says he's been Googling information about sperm counts and whatnot. And apparently um, he feels that he depleted his soldiers by masturbating, which <laughs> might be true. I'm not sure. But A1 was like, well, I don't want to know about your sperm life. But I was like, y'all all went to the sperm doctor together and learned about each other's sperm life. So that don't make no sense. Anyways, Princess shows up half naked. And come to find out after watching some bonus footage on VH1.com, that was Lyrica's idea. But anyway, Princess pops up and she shows up half naked and she's trying to kick A1 out the room so they can do it because she ovulating. And Ray J is so ashamed of his, you know, emasculation for having 9 million sperm, which really isn't emasculation. It's just a, a little insecurity or whatever. And um, not having the right diet and, and doing the right things, smoking and whatnot. But Ray J, um, <laughs> all of a sudden, like, turns things on Princess. Princess is getting upset because he doesn't want to do her right then and there. And then he says that the, the photo shoot at a hotel that he had planned for Bridget Kelly is now going to be a romantic getaway for Princess. And A1 looks so confused, and I was confused too. Like, how quickly can this man turn on a dime and lie to the woman that he loves and that he's married to? A1 don't need to be hanging around Ray J. And like A1 said, honesty is the best policy, but Ray J is a bad influence. Anyways, they are at the hotel, and Princess is acting slow. And uh, she sees the little rack with all the clothes on it. And she's like, what, what is this? And he's like, well, I thought we could role play. And she was like, well, that's not my style. And next thing you know, a cameraman pops out and then Princess gets mad. But she does not get mad like the old Princess used to do. Um, so I, I kind of like the people are kind of calming down um, on this season. 
But um, then Bridget Kelly comes out looking like Tits McGee um, in a mariachi band. <laughs> that was funny. Um, and so Princess is mad and Bridget Kelly is mad because um, she feels like it's a bad look or now her and Princess are going to have some tension because, you know, uh, Ray J is lying or whatever. And, uh, y'all, why do everybody's boobs in the confessionals look terrible? Tierra Marie, Masika, and Bridget Kelly all have, like, some type of discoloration or a something on their boobs. It makes it look bad. And it's like, don't y'all have some, some makeup or concealer or something for that? They, they just don't look nice. But anyways, um, next we see Ray J and Princess at the beach. And Ray J got a new mouth which means that he, he shaved off his beard and his mustache. And I did not like him looking like that. He looked like Dorian from uh, Moesha, <laughs> like back in his younger days. But he finally admits about his sperm count being low. And you can really, and this is why honesty is the best policy, because he thought that she was going to be upset with him but she was actually happy that he went to get himself checked out and that he was actually concerned about his role in them, you know, raising a family. So, yeah, that's it for Ray J and Princess. So let's move on to, I guess we'll move on to Monice and Masika next. And so they're doing this podcast. Uh, who listens to this podcast? Do any people care about it? It's very high school um, it's very juvenile. I, I'm very annoyed by it. And I am tired of seeing Masika's boobs in this dang confessional. But anyways, they talk about Hazel and they need to move past that. They talk about Nikki dating a married ball player. They need to move past that. I mean, it's like nobody is off limits. They talk about, um, the, the beef that they have with people who are friends with people that they don't like. And it's like, is this a high school podcast where high school girls talk about who they don't like. I mean, I, I'm just very over it. And so Monique claims, I don't even, I don't even remember who she was talking about at this point, but she's like, you know, I like, oh, she was talking about Tiffany, AD's friend. And she was like, well, you know, I like to take the high road first. And Masika looked at her the same way I was looking at her. Like, you know, you don't be liking to take the, the high road first or whatever. But um, I found the whole podcast to be boring and <sighs> juvenile, and I was actually a little sick watching it. So I'm like, um, you ladies need to go sell some, some lipstick and some hot peen and, um, you know, do something with your lives instead of sitting around gossiping all day ugh, on a podcast, nonetheless, anyways. So um, later on, we see that AD is not cool with this podcast because of the way Monice talked about Tiffany. And I kind of agree with AD because it's one thing to tell your friend that the person you're, I think the person you're with is an opportunist and they're using you. And it's a different thing than going on a public podcast that, you know, a hundred people listen to and saying, hey, she's a walking condom or whatever she called her. So, um, I do think that both Tiffany and Monice are out of line, but since I don't have a dog in this fight, um, I really don't care. But since I have been disliking Monice for longer, I just, I'm not here for her. I'm not here for either one of them, really, because Tiffany is, is clearly um, jealous and very overprotective. But uh, AD, I think, is dreaming with the idea that these two will ever be cool. So um, Monice was cooler than usual. I will give her that. She sat there and listened to everything Tiffany had to say about her, um, about her not being a, the proper mother, um, about her um, dating, you know, or, or sleeping with a whole bunch of men because apparently she has, you know, these connections that tell her, hey, you know, I'm a ball player, I'm a celebrity, and Monice does this, this, and that. Um, but yeah, um, and it, it kind of made her look bad saying, it made Tiffany look bad saying, Hey, I, I have all of these male connections that tell me about you that it, it didn't reflect the best on Tiffany anyway. But Monice, um, you know, was saying, I am not issuing an apology until I receive an apology and yeah, whatever. Um. Tiffany's over it and Monice is over it and she walks off the same way she walks off 
all the time. And so next we see Masika house shopping with her new found baby mama fortune. And um, apparently, you know, Moniece has a problem with being timely, but she shows Nia and Masika a PSA that Alexis put on social media. Um, and she's, you know, coming for all of them and, and saying, you know, you guys are jealous of me and all this kind of stuff. And uh, Alexis starts coming for Moniece's motherhood. Now, I did not like that Alexis went after Moniece's family like that, talking about her mom and her son and, and all that kind of stuff. That was too far. Um, so uh, Nia told Masika that Masika needed to handle it. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about that later because that, that comes up later. But moving on, we have um, Alexis Sky and Solo Lucci. They have a short conversation um, and it's a little mature. They don't yell. They don't scream. Alexis gets a little emotional because she felt like he was being unfair when he called her a pass around. Um, and I found that Alexis looks very pretty with natural makeup and not so much weave. I mean, she looks very pretty in that scene and natural lighting. Um, and so he apologized and she forgave him. And that's the end of it for both of them. So that's nice. Moving on. We'll talk about... Brooke, Marcus Black, and then Moniece's run-in with Lyrica. And so Marcus Black is doing some performance for a song that I'm not a big fan of. Brooke shows up to make him jealous, and then Brooke shades Lyrica for taking so long on her album when Brooke hasn't had an album out in maybe a decade. So um, that was very funny to me. But um, Moniece said that she came... To this showcase or listening party, whatever it was, performance, she came to Marcus Black's performance so that she could support him one new artist to another. Now, if you all recall, Monice has been an artist for at least a decade. Ain't nothing about her a new artist. New boobs do not make you a new artist. She is a struggling artist like all the other people on this show. So she needs to move. She needs to calm down on that new artist, my butt. Anyways, um, I didn't understand what she had against Lyrica. And it's like, if you're friends with somebody that I don't like, that doesn't have anything to do with my relationship with you. So she just created beef where there was none. And um, I kind of feel like Monique knows not to mess with Lyrica like that because... Monice might be quick and crazy, but Lyrica got like the muscle. <laughs> and um, Alexa said on a bonus clip that it was interesting that Monice didn't say anything bad, um, anything real bad, like I want to be her A, you know, until Lyrica walked off. So Monice might, you know, have met her match. I don't know, y'all. But anyways, so... um. Lyrica was being nice and tried to invite them to the party. And Monice was getting back to her old self. And she's like, I don't want to associate with anybody who associates with Alexis. And then, um, you know, things just went left. And Lyrica was like, well, I'll talk to Nia when her sidekick is not here. And, um, yeah, it just went real left. And Lyrica was like, well, you need to worry about getting in the studio and making your career happen. Okay. And stop worrying about me and Alexis. <laughs> and Monique said, you know, we're not taking anything away from your talent. Um, but, you know, Lyrica had a point. You know, focus on you and, and your career. And stop worrying about the petty stuff about who I'm friends with or whatever. And so Monique was like she wanted to fight Lyrica. And I felt like Monique's urge to fight Lyrica was stronger than her urge to fight Tiffany, which I feel is, is very weird and very disproportionate. So I don't know if Monique's rage from the Tiffany situation was being taken out on Lyrica. I don't understand why she felt so strongly about it. But anyways, um, I feel like Lyrica got the best of Monique in that exchange. Now, typically, Monique is the best at playing unbothered 
And the way that she trips people up, the way that she aggravates people, the way that she gets people to make a fool of themselves is by playing it cool and um, just letting them do what they do and just walking away. But this time, to me, it seemed like Lyrica was the one who let Monice play herself. Um, so I, I think that Monice may have met a match in Lyrica. And I'm very interested in that because I don't really like Monice and I do like Lyrica. So, um, yeah, I'm interested to see how that beef unfolds. And so we see Lyrica talking to Hazel and Alexis about what had happened. And so, y'all, what type of witch's brew was Hazel drinking? That black drink? I don't know if I would ever drink a black drink. That's weird. But anyways, um, Lyrica tells them about what happened at the, the party because, you know, Alexis Sky left early. And so Lyrica told me what happened and Hazel had a great insight. And she was saying that Monice's loyalty to Masika is so strong that it has created beef upon beef upon beef and it's, it's making things, um, you know, making things a very sticky situation. And she said, you know, all Alexis wanted was her one-on-one -on -one with Masika. But because Masika was being a coward, the beef has expanded to, you know, friends of friends of friends. So I was like, you know what, Hazel, you're right. Um, and now Alexis is on a petty mission. And then that's when she put out all those messages and PSAs and whatnot. So lastly, we're going to talk about Tierra, Amber, and Cisco. And so Tierra and Amber meet up. They have a conversation. Um, Amber is very shady towards Tierra, and Amber doesn't have any intention of leaving Cisco. Um, she basically just wants to show Tierra what type of dude she's dealing with. And what's interesting, though, is that Tierra Marie is trying to pull a Brooke Valentine, where she gets <laughs> Cisco to denounce <laughs> his girl. <laughs> she gets Cisco to denounce his girl. And then she breaks up with him, which is the same thing Brooke Valentine did with Jade and Marcus Black. So anyways, um, Tierra is, you know, not even really responding to the shade that Amber is throwing her because she really wants to see for herself what's going on. So they set Cisco up. Tierra knocks on the door and he's caught red handed and covered in red lipstick and, um, he flips the switch. He, he does, you know, the little turncoat thing. And basically, he changed his tune and was like, I was only here with Amber for fun whenever you and I had an argument. So I'm going to give Tierra her props because she's the person that I really want to be with. So it was funny to me because he turned, he is manipulative that way. And so I knew that he was going to take a turn somewhere. But, um, the fact that he turned his back so quickly on the person who actually really wanted to be with him was funny to me. And Tierra took so much pleasure in that. And that was funny to me as well. She was sticking her tongue out like she was in kindergarten. Like, like, nah, 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 nah. <laughs> that was funny to me. And so she gets her stuff. Amber gets her stuff to pack up and leave. And Amber is leaving. And then Tierra, being the smart person she is, is like, okay, bye. And then he's like, well, wait, Amber. And so Amber is like, so when Tierra is leaving, you call me. But when I'm leaving, you call Tierra. Like, what's going on? And then after he realizes that they're not going to fall for his BS anymore, he starts getting loud and aggressive. And um, at that point, it's over with. So he starts getting fake mad. <sighs> All the games these men play. But that's it, y'all. I was pretty entertained. Um, next time, we're going to talk about Tierra versus Hazel and see what their issue is. Um... And, you know, Nikki's mom is showing some mama love to Tierra to try to get her to calm down. Um, we also see Monice and Alexis, but we don't see them fight. But we hear about a fight. And the real question is, who won that fight? Because we got different stories going on. And considering how I don't really have a dog in that fight, um, I don't necessarily care. But it would be nice to, to really know. It's like, how were there no cameras around? How did nobody... Put this on World Store Hip Hop, or did they? Put it in the comments if you, if you know that there's some footage lying around somewhere. But anyways, and then we talk about fertility with Ray and Princess and whether or not Ray J is ready to have a baby. And then 
we see um, Brooke Valentine ready to go all in with Booby. So yeah, that's all you guys. I was thoroughly entertained by this episode. Thank you guys for listening. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Peace out, home slices.